We thank you for taking the time, amen, to tune in with us. Let me first start off by saying happy Mother's Day to all of those, amen, mothers that are out there and those that are celebrating and to those of you like myself whose mom may not um, be with them any longer. Let us rejoice and be grateful for the awesome women that they were in our lives and the seeds that they took the time to sow. So let's be united and celebrating, amen, in the Lord for mothers today. I am so grateful that I have the opportunity to stand before you once again and to bring what thus saith the Lord. I'm excited today, amen, and I don't know about you, but sometimes it's um, more of a press than others. I want to be transparent this morning, amen. Some things are just harder than others, amen. But nevertheless, the joy of the Lord continues to be my strength. So just for a couple of moments this morning, I want to share with you, uh, and I thank you, amen, for your continued support and your prayers, amen, and just for you being you. Um, on behalf of In His Image and Bishop Melvin Blake, we are grateful Amen, that God continues to use us to be able to bring forth and spread his word beyond the walls of the church. For a little while, I want to share with you, amen, coming from 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse number 12. And I'm reading from the Amplified Classic Version, and it reads, Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold of the eternal life to which you were summoned, and for which you confessed the good confession of faith before many witnesses. So for a few moments this morning, I want to share with you just from the thought of it's worth the fight. It's worth the fight. I, I, don't, I don't know about you, but even in the, as I was praying and seeking the Lord and I, I say, God, I said, you know, what is it that you would have me just to share with your 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 people today? And, you know, and I know, you know, it's Mother's Day and you want to, get a message out about the mothers and, you know, you want to preach about Mary and all of the, the good times and all of that. But, 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 you know, I said, God, he says, no, he shared with me, you know, he said, um, you know, are you willing to fight? And I said, God, you, you keep dealing with me with this word fight. And, and, and I was praying and I said, okay, God, because and one of the things as he revealed to me, even while I was inquiring of him, he said that now is the time for the people who are called by my name to fight the good fight of faith like never before. Amen. And, and I don't know about you, but I'm excited because the word fight means to agonize, struggle, battle, contend, and fight for the prize. Hallelujah. In other words, you've got to do your best to do what is morally right in order to be able to obtain the prize. Someone, you know, who is fighting the good fight is working tirelessly to try and make good decisions, not only for yourself, but that you might be able to be a blessing and help somebody else. Amen. And it is Mother's Day, correct? And think about what mothers always do. They always put themselves on the back burner. They always make sure that the children are taken care of and, you know, the husbands are okay and, and taken care of. They, they make sure that everybody else, amen, is taken care of before they even consider themselves. So, in other words, you, you're fighting the good fight and you're making good choices, but then you're also making sure that you're helping others while you're on the way. This person, amen, like Timothy, I'm talking about you and I, wants to improve the world around us. Am I right about it today? We really have to have an earnest desire to want to make a difference. But in order to do that, we first must be the difference. So we want to make and improve the things around us. You know, the, if you look at this thing, and, and I know we're studying the book of Hebrews on, on um, Tuesday during our noonday Bible study, and we're talking about, amen, 
faith and and we're talking about this race that we're in and we're to be contenders and 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 if you think about this this fight this is a picture of an athlete of an athletic contest in other words an athletic contest and I, I was sharing with them on Tuesday during the noon Bible study that you know Jesus was the front runner amen and he was the end you know the last leg amen when you're running in a track beat and you know how you normally pass the baton but it's time for us, even though we know that Christ is the front runner, he's passed the baton, amen, and guess what? He didn't stop there, but he's got us covered even in the final end of the race, amen? So, so I thought about that. We are in a contest. In other words, we're fighting for our very life. My brothers and my sisters, we are in a desperate struggle for eternal life. We're just not fighting just to fight. You know how you have some folk when you were growing up, they just wanted to fight just to fight. Didn't have any rhyme or reason. Just because the sun came up, they wanted to fight. But I'm not talking about the good fight of faith. I'm talking about they just wanted to have a physical fight. Always confusion and something going on. But they wanted to fight no matter what. But we as born again believers, God instilled something in us that he gave us what we needed that we might be able to fight the good fight of faith. So you see, laying hold on the prize of eternal life is definitely going to be a struggle. Uh, you know, I, I, I thought about it. I'm like, okay, God, yeah, I've, I've had some struggles in, in, in my life. Amen. And, and you know, you, you think about it. I've had some good days. I've had some bad days, but all of my good days outweigh my bad days. When you begin to encourage your own self, you will look at this fighting the good fight of faith from a different perspective. You know, but I have some good news. We've been equipped to do battle and walk in victory. Amen. And God never leaves you where you are, but he gives you what you need in order to, that you might go forth and be and become all that he's called you to be. And, and we are equipped to do battle and walk in victory. And somebody needs to hear that today. So while, you, while I'm telling you this, this is one thing I need you to do. I need you to embrace your assignment because we don't understand that what we are doing is divine assignment from God. Amen. Continue to fight the good fight of faith. You may have to go places that you may not want to go. Somebody say embrace your assignment. You might have to sow into people or places and things you may not never ever understand. And then you might have to encourage or pray for or build up others while you yourself are in need or in the midst of a battle and in need of encouragement, prayer, and renewed strength, your own self. Anybody ever been there other than me? You find yourself that you're always pouring out. And you find yourself, you know who you are, and you know how equipped you are, but every now and then, <laughs> every now and then, you get tired in your spirit, man. And anybody, anybody been there? You get tired in your spirit, man, and you have a, a tendency to look back over your life, my God, and, and you see where you almost fainted while you were on your way to your destiny. You, you find yourself that you're praying for somebody else and you're encouraging other folk and then you turn around and there's nobody to encourage you or pray for you. You know, I, let me encourage you today. Continue to fight the good fight of faith because Jesus is our ultimate encourager. He is sitting on the right hand of the Father and he is cheering us on while we're struggling, while we're going through this battle, while we're continuing to fight the good fight of faith. So my brothers and my sisters, learn how to encourage yourself. Never allow yourself to fall into a woe is me situation or circumstance because it was only hinder what God has for you. Amen. Let, let me let you know this because it is worth the fight. <laughs> it's never about how I feel. Tell your neighbor, tell your roommate, tell your family, tell somebody that how I feel is irrelevant because if if it mattered about how you really felt, some days you wouldn't get out of bed. <laughs> you wouldn't go to work. Some days you just wouldn't do anything. You would just sit down and think about, woe is me. But it's never about how you feel. How you feel is irrelevant when it comes to this good fight of faith. Amen. I, I know that Jesus promised us he would never leave us or forsake us. He's always there whether we feel like it or not. Let me tell you something. If he... 
<laughs> wasn't there because he didn't feel like it. Can you imagine how hard headed we've been? And if Jesus said, look, I'm tired of dealing with them. You know, why am I doing all this? They don't appreciate anything. You know, I'm here doing all this. Nobody is praying for me. Nobody is encouraging me. What about me? Suppose Jesus had felt that way, but he promised us that he would never leave us nor forsake us. He's always there. He's always, somebody say, always there. We have been called into this army, this spiritual battle, for a purpose, and it's God's purpose. Amen? So tell yourself, just embrace your assignment. You may not understand, but everything that God places in your hand is your assignment. Your job is your assignment. Amen? If we get, we want to get a call up on ministry, but everything you do is ministry because you are a servant of the Most High God. You don't have to have a title, but you have to understand that we're here to serve others. So therefore, you need to learn how to embrace your assignment. Your assignment can be in the grocery store. Your assignment can be in your house. Your assignment can be wherever God sends you, but you need to learn how to embrace your assignment. And what am I telling you? Because everything that God puts in your spirit for his good, you've got to fight the good fight of faith so you can receive divine revelation on what God's divine purpose is in that situation and circumstance. We've been called to fulfill the Great Commission as ambassadors for Christ. Amen? As ambassadors. That's good news. And think about God has chosen us <laughs> to carry out his work and will in the earth realm. We can't do this without a fight. Because everybody doesn't want to hear it. Everybody won't receive it. So keep telling yourself, it's worth the fight. You ever come up against something and you say, no, I'm a back there. But my brothers and my sisters, let me encourage you and let you know it's worth the fight. Amen? It's worth the fight. Yes, the enemy will always, always try to stop you in any way he can. That's his assignment. To throw us off course. To get us off track. Amen? But... He's always going to try to stop you, although he will sometimes hinder us, and he will try to hinder us, amen, through various means and ways. He can't stop us, but he can't stop us. He can try to hinder us, but he can't stop us. And why can't he stop us? Because he doesn't have the authority to stop us. Let me tell you again. The enemy does not have the authority to stop you. Amen. We give too much credit to the enemy. He's already a defeated foe. He can't stop us. He does not have the authority. And I want, to, want you really to get that down in your spirit. So wherever you're standing right now in this moment in time, whatever you find yourself faced with in this moment of time, understand that it's worth the fight. And the enemy does not have the authority to stop you. Amen? But don't you dare, hmm, don't you ever get weary in your good fight of faith. Don't get weary. It might get hard, but don't you get weary in fighting the good fight of faith. You may have to just step back, take a deep breath, and make this thing personal. <laughs> you know, we, we want to not allow ourselves to be human, but you've got to make that thing personal. In other words, you need to understand and begin to tell yourself, my destiny depends on me fighting the good fight of faith. My blessing shall be released through it. Continue to fight the good fight of faith. My strength shall be gained by it. <laughs> my hope will become renewed because of the good fight of faith. Amen. Because when you're tried by your faith, you have a way of building up that muscle. Amen. And you find yourself stronger and wiser and better because of what God allowed you to go through. And when you see yourself on the other side, because you're fighting a good fight of faith, when you see yourself in the midst of whatever it might be in your life, I want to encourage you to continue to fight the good fight of faith like never before and keep your eyes on the prize while you're fighting it because you can see what the end is going to be. Don't get stuck in the right now, but while you're fighting the good fight of faith, understand that you're fighting 
for your life. And you're fighting that you might live again. Hallelujah. I'm excited about the word of God today because I am in a fight for my life. No matter how much I think I've obtained, there's still more for me to do. Amen. In other words, he was encouraging him. I'm talking about Paul encouraging Timothy to continue to fight the good fight of faith and to walk in the victory that has already been won. Let me tell you something. Don't you know that victory is yours? The battle has already been won. All you have to do is stay in the fight. Stay in the fight. Hallelujah. It's worth the fight because God is faithful. God is faithful. I tell myself all the time, no matter what's going on, I find myself repeating to myself each and every day of my life that my God is faithful. He's never failed me yet. Hallelujah. He's never failed me yet. First Corinthians 10 and 13 tells me this. There have no temptation taken you but such as in common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. As kingdom citizens, we must have confidence and assurance in the God of our salvation. Hallelujah. We must understand that there's nothing that God allows to come our way that he did not, that he did not foresee us going through it. And he did not uh, show us, be able to give us a glimpse of what the end was going to be. Amen. And, and, and when we begin to embrace that work that God began in us, which is a good work. <laughs> Amen. He began a good work in me and in you. You know the work that revolutionized you. You, you know the work that rad radically changed who you used to be. You, you know that work that, that, that he began in you. You know, when you began and you stepped out by faith and you, you know, believed in your heart and you confessed with your mouth that Jesus was the son of the living God. Hallelujah. And you accepted him as Lord and Savior. God began a good work on the inside of you. Amen. And then he began to revolutionize you and change some things about you on the inside. And even though people might not have recognized it in the not yet on the outside, the work had already begun because you confessed him as Lord and Savior. Because no matter what or no matter the kind of life you may have been living before. Amen. No matter what you used to be or what you used to do or how you used to look or, or the things you used to think and the places you used to go. Hallelujah. And, you know, once God got a hold of you, anybody got a, God got a hold of you, he got a hold of you and he wouldn't turn you loose. You, you know, you found yourself just being captivated by God just embraced you. Hallelujah. Once God began to convert you, you began to live a good life. Didn't say a perfect life. I didn't say everything was all wrapped up, amen, and perfect. But I said that he began to, to allow you to live a good life, a life better than you lived before. Why? Because your hope was built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. And that's when your life began to change because you no longer were trying to do this thing by yourself. Tell yourself to continue to fight the good fight of faith. And then once God converted you, things began to change in your life. Why? Because God is faithful. And then when you realize this, you begin to tell yourself every day, you know, when you wake up, God, I thank you for allowing me to see a brand new day, a day that I've never seen before. And God, I thank you because I stayed in the fight on yesterday. And because you allowed me to wake up a brand new day, God, I realize that it's worth the fight. Why? Because God, you're still faithful. God, you're still faithful. Hallelujah. The same God that was faithful yesterday, he's still faithful today. First Corinthians 1, 1 and 9 says, and this is the Amplified Classic Version, and it says, God is faithful, reliable trustworthy and therefore ever true to his promise and he can be depended on by him you were called into companionship and partisan participation with his son Jesus Christ our Lord isn't it good that he invites you into what he's doing 
You know how when you were growing up, you didn't get invited to a whole lot of parties because you didn't hang with the right crowd? Or you didn't wear the latest fashions or you didn't fit the, the, the mold that you needed to fit in order to be invited to the party. And, you know, those that, you know, the party crashes, you know, you went anyhow, you know, when you had a group. But you didn't go by yourself. You took a group because you were going to that party. Even though you weren't invited, you were going to show up regardless. And, and God invited us to participate with his son, Jesus Christ, in this good fight. Am I right about it? So you need to understand. Know that this is Good work. Amen. No, this is a good work. Know that you are a good work in the things of God. It's worth the fight because God is still faithful. Know that this good work is incomplete as long as we as believers live in the earth. You know, we will never be made perfect until we transition to glory. Amen. We're looking to be perfect. Amen. And God he said that he will what? Establish us and make us perfect. But you've got to look at what the end he's talking. We're talking about eternal life. Amen. We are never perfected. Not while we are mere men. Amen. We're always going to have what? Trials and tribulations. There's always going to be something that's going to come our way. That's why it behooves us to continue to fight the good fight of faith. You know, there is always work for God to do in us, through us, and for us. Therefore, God is working within our lives to mature us more and more each and every day. You know, tell yourself, tell yourself, God is faithful. And then when you go into a new day that you've never seen, wake up and thank God for allowing you to see a brand new day. And then remind yourself that God is still faithful. The faithful God of yesterday is still the faithful God of today. And then you need to realize that it doesn't stop there. But because he's faithful and he's still faithful, you need to realize that God is forever faithful. God is forever faithful. Amen. Philippians 1 and 6 tells me being confident of this very thing, that he which had begun a good work in you, in me, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. This good work we're talking about is to be completed once we make it into heaven. For that is when we shall be transformed into a perfect man, and given a perfect body. I don't care how much you work out. I don't care how much you diet. I don't care how cute you think you may look. I don't care what your measurements might be. I don't care what's going on on the externalness of who you are. You will never be per- perfect until you make it home to glory. Amen. Now, I'm not telling you not to work on this temple because we're to take care of this temple. Amen. You have to be careful what you put in it. Hallelujah, how you use it and where you take it. But you need to understand that you need to work at perfecting the spirit man that lives on the inside of you. That's where your perfection begins. That's where the good fight of faith has to start. That's where you have to continue to focus on. Amen. But then, it, you know, it was never like I imagined. And I thought about that thing. I said, okay, God, you, you know, we, 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 we think about all of these things that we deal with. And God, I know you've been faithful in my life. And when I thought that it was over, God, you were still faithful. And even, hallelujah, 64 years later, God, you're forever faithful. And, and, and I'm grateful because I did say it's Mother's Day, amen. So I, 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 I'm going to give you a little bit of uh, Mother's Day info for those of you, you know, who might be struggling and, and want to just get out of the fight, that you're just tired of being tired. And, and, man, it seems like no matter how hard you fight, you can't seem to get ahead of the battle. And, and your mind is all over the place. But I want to let you know this, amen, that, that because God loves you just that much, he created you in a way that you're positioned to give life. And, 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 and I thought about, you know, he took me back when I gave birth to my first child. Amen. It was, it was an adventure. It, it didn't turn out like the storybooks that I had read. And, and there was nothing that mirrored that for me. All of this joy and stuff people talked about, I, I did not see it at the moment of labor. And, and 48 hours of labor, yes, 
48 hours. For 48 hours. For 48. And I'm saying that 48. You can tell that, that the pain was still there. Uh, it was nothing like I had ever imagined. You know, never ending pain and long suffering and, and just in need of help from anybody, somebody, you know, just to make it stop. You know, during that time, you know, I, I, I was just looking to the end of the agony. You see, I had my own perspective, and it was only based solely on what I had seen on TV or in the movies, you know, and, and, and you know, or, or the hype that people had tried to make this out to be. But I wasn't feeling any of that in the 48 hours. Amen. I even was dressed up and put a, you know, back in the day in the 70s, you had a scarf, you know, scarf with everything, tied a scarf around the neck and was dressed up and just, just excited about what was about to take place. But oh, when the battle began, everything began to shift. You, you know, you, you think about it, you look cute and you go to the hospital and you're smiling and you're joyful and, and, and then you wake up and your hair's all fixed and your face is made up and you're propped up and you're looking cute and you're holding this precious bundle of joy. A amen. And a lot of us look at fighting a good fight of faith in that way. <laughs> but it's worth the fight. And even though it was 48 hours for me of labor, it was worth the fight. What I'm saying is that even though sometimes things might not seem or appear the way you may have expected it, what matters is that God is faithful. And, and, and I was saying that because God has a way of sending the help that you need. And, and I remember, amen, uh, just being there and a seasoned woman, everybody needs some seasoned folk in their lives. A seasoned nurse walked in the room. And she got in my face and she said, we're going to do this and I'm going to show you how to get it done. Every now and then, because you're in this fight, God will send you some help that you need to help you continue to fight the good fight of faith. That you might be able to take a deep breath every now and then and come to yourself and continue to fight the good fight of faith. Well, let me tell you something. When that lady got in my face and she spoke words to me, I adhered to what she was telling me and I want to let you know that two minutes later, amen, my first child was born. Somebody need to give God glory. So no matter how long you might have to go through the pain and the agony, and it might not seem or appear the way you thought it should have happened because we want everything like microwave. God is still in control because he is still faithful and he is forever faithful. But I thank God for the seasoned folk that he's placed in my life that's able to sow seed and provide instruction and to give me encouragement when I need it. Amen. But, but it's worth the fight. And what I'm saying that even though, even though some things are just harder than others, you've got to continue to fight the good fight of faith because it's about your eternal life. It's not about the right now moment that you're dealing with. What matters is that my God is faithful. And Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. In result, a beautiful, a beautiful, a beautiful, healthy baby girl I was given. That was the expected end. A beautiful, healthy baby girl. Amen. Amen. It's been a blessing in our lives. And it's worth the fight. It was worth every 48 hours. Amen. Through the pain, the long suffering, and yes, the never-ending agony. I couldn't see the end because I was stuck in the right now moment. But when you get out of the right now moment, you're able to see the Shakana glory of God rest ruling and abiding over your life in the midst of fighting a good fight of faith. And last but not least, <laughs> happy Mother's Day. My second childbirth was a different experience for me. Why? Because, I, I, you know, I had obtained victory in that area, you know. Yes, pain, but because I had already obtained victory in that area, you know, before I was ready and my mind was already at the end result. I, I, you, know, I, I, you know, from the day they said that you are expecting, I was already in labor and delivery in my mind. Amen. And, and, and I had to laugh at my own self years later, but I was already there. And you see, my expectations was framed by my previous experience. <laughs> Whew. Hallelujah. How many people really realize that things are different every time? So you can't get caught on the battle that you won yesterday, the fight that you won yesterday, the same way the fight today. Amen. 
Hallelujah. But but you know, many really know. Many may not know. But I encourage you to embrace and understand that your expectations, your expectations have to be in God. Not in what you think, not in what it looks like, not in what it feels like, but keep your expectations in God. That's how you will be able to fight the good fight of faith. And all, oh, let me tell you something. Suddenly, you know, when I got there and we were there and it was a snowstorm and we were there and, you know, and I, you know, I thought about that thing and, and we got there and uh, we were like at the finish line when we walked in. You know, we knew that the baby was going to be born within no more than 30 minutes of our arrival. That's how close things were. But let me let you know something. When you see victory in your sight, don't get thrown, but stay focused. Stay focused on the prize. Because even in the midst of me being almost to the finish line, my perceived finish line, things began to change. The baby rolled and he shifted on me. And sometimes I'm preaching to myself and I'm preaching to you because this is some good stuff because it blessed me for him to take me all the way back then to let me know that he is faithful and he is always in control in the midst of every battle that you deal with. And in the naturalness of who I was, this should have happened this way. But because things began to change and shift, I had a choice. I could get stuck in that right now moment and miss God, or I could just trust and believe him for being the faithful God that he has always been. And he rolled and he got stuck. And there was no more movement for him to make. And the doctors became concerned. And, and the next thing I know, they were taking me down and, and they were running me down because they had to go in and get them here because they were concerned. And any mother knows what I'm talking about. And they had to go in and they made a decision to go in after him that he might get here. What I'm saying is that things in your life may roll a different way than you expected them. Or things may change, amen, from the plans you've already made. And a shift is required. <laughs> Tell somebody a shift is required in order that his plan can be manifested. Whatever you're dealing with, understand this. If God allowed the shift, he's already put things in motion that he, his plans and his will for your life will be manifested. Me, will be, I'm getting tongue-tied because I'm excited because I know I'm talking to somebody today. You're experiencing a shift in your life. It didn't end up in this moment in time the way you ever even perceived it to be. Oh, but let me encourage you, whoever you may be, that the shift is for your good. Even though a shift took place, let me tell you, God will put what you need right there in that moment in time that you will be taken care of. You will be healed, delivered, and set free, and victory shall be yours. Why? Because you continue to fight the good fight of faith. Don't get blindsided. Don't get sidetracked. And don't you dare quit because things have shifted, amen, in your life. But baby, God is faithful. God is still faithful. And God is forever faithful. So let me tell you this. Today, today is your day to continue to fight the good fight of faith. This is why the apostle Paul admonished Timothy to fight the good fight of faith. Continue to fight the good fight of faith. Amen. And although, amen, marriages and children and finances and, and jobs and health and, and, and pandemics and relationships and, you know, amen, you feel in your own blank. You know what shift is taking place in your life. I don't need to know, amen, but God knows, and that's all that matters. And let me tell you, everything.
pain that comes your way, God has allowed it, and he's allowed it for your good. The word tells us that all things work together for the good of those who love God, to those that are called according to what? His purpose. Everything that you're going through is for God's divine purpose. So don't you get it twisted. It's not even all about you. But I am excited because everything that we go through, we're already victorious if we walk in victory. And how do we do that? By continuing to fight the good fight of faith. So stay focused. Never lose focus because life will allow you to get off focus. Stay focused on the prize, amen, and, and stay focused and remain free. Don't you dare get bound because a shift is taking place. Don't you dare get bound because things didn't go out the way and you perceived them to be one way in your mind. Let me tell you, let this mind be in me that's also in Christ Jesus. When you begin to think the thoughts like Christ thought, then you will be free and free indeed. But think about it. Keep trusting God like never before in every seed. You have sown shall bring forth a harvest in his due season. God is still God. God is still faithful. God is forever faithful. I'm telling you that so you won't forget it. Put it on your refrigerator. Put it on your mirror. Write it in the tablets of your heart. When you feel like giving up, remind yourself how faithful your God has been to you. Amen. Through every loss, through every disappointment, through every discouragement, through everything you've had to face, God has still remained faithful on your behalf. So never forget. That he is the same yesterday. You know that God that was with you before you were saved? <laughs> the God that saved you, that you were a wretch undone. Remember he's a God, the same God yesterday and today he's still walking with you. He's still keeping you. He's still mindful of your every need. And guess what? Today and forevermore, he's not going to drop you like a hot potato. He's going to be, he's not going to turn his back on you. He's going to be with you until the end. Hallelujah. For a good fight is a fight that you win. And if you're not in it, you can't win it. Let me tell you, one of the most important lines I like from the color purple is when Oprah, yeah, I'm going to the color purple, is when Oprah said, all my life I had to fight. When you have a spirit of fight in you for the right reason, I'm talking about the good fight of faith. When you were born, you had to fight your way here. Amen. Hallelujah. When you were born, you had to fight to learn how to walk. You had to press your way to do some things. And let me tell you, the fight doesn't end until you make it home to glory. Fight all my life. I had to fight. When you realize that you got to fight, hallelujah, you realize that you will win. A good fight is a fight that you win. That is why we must never give up. If you felt like giving up before you tuned in this morning, don't you dare give up. The stakes are too high. Quitting is not an option. You can't quit. Quitting is not an option. To quit is to admit defeat. So I encourage you to walk in the revelation of knowing that it's worth the fight. My brothers and my sisters, whatever you're dealing with today, I encourage you, I admonish you to never give up on God because he never gives up on us. And no matter how things may look and how difficult things may seem, and no matter how intense the pain may be, no matter how hard the struggle might seem, no matter how difficult the battle might look like, you have to go through the wind. God is with you, and he will never leave you nor forsake you. And I encourage you to stay in the fight. Stay in the fight, and God will give you the help that you need. Hallelujah. He's got you covered on every side. Amen. You don't have to worry about losing because he's going to fight every battle for you, but you've got to be in this thing to win it. Don't let your mind get you off track. Don't let your eyes deceive you. Oh, but incline your ears to the Lord and listen to what the Spirit of God is telling you. I'm done, my brothers and my sisters. Happy Mother's Day. So I just want to let you know today that every labor pain that you went through, it was worth the fight. Everything that you thought you lost, it was worth the fight. Everything that you're yet going to go through, it's worth the fight. Don't you quit. Don't you give up. Don't you stop. Don't you turn back. Don't you sit down on God, but embrace your assignment and do all that God has placed in your hands to do. To God be all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Tell somebody how much you love them. Tell somebody how much you appreciate them and then pray for one another and encourage somebody else just to continue to fight the good fight of faith. To God be all the glory. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to what thus saith the Lord. Today is your day to continue to fight the good fight of faith. Why? Because it's worth the fight. God bless you. Thank you so much. Pray is not faithfulness. Ha. 